Hey everyone, uh, in this video I want to talk to you about the student's T distribution and the practical way that you end up doing, um, you, you end up finding confidence intervals. So uh, yeah, let me start off by sharing my notes. So let's do this. So here's what we want to do. Um, you may recall from the last video that I said that we would be using only statistics to provide an estimate for parameters, which is which is true. Very, very, very beginning of this, right? Confidence interval, that's what it does. It estimates a parameter using only statistics. But up until this point, I have been using sigma all the time. The reason I've been doing that is because it's a little bit complicated to get rid of sigma. We need it for the central limit theorem. However, there was a person, uh, an Irishman named William Seeley Gossett, who worked for uh, Guinness, Guinness Brewery. Um, who found that um, basically the statistics that they were getting from whatever chemical things that you need to do for uh, for brewing, which uh, there's quite a bit of science in that actually, uh, weren't working out. They weren't as precise as he would have as he would have expected using a normal distribution. Turns out that if you can't use the center limit theorem because your sample size is too small, basically, then you, well, you don't get a normally distributed um, sampling distribution. What you get is a sampling distribution that he called the T distribution. Now they call it the student's T distribution, not because it's intended for students to use, but because when um, William Gossett wrote the paper, he used the pseudonym student perhaps at a, a, a uh, I don't know, some attempt at humility. There's some thought that um, that perhaps Guinness didn't want its, didn't want its competitors to know what they were doing. And so they didn't want it to know one people to know that the paper was by him who was a, who was a, apparently well known. Um, so anyway, he called himself student. It's not like this is only for students and not professionals or something. This is, I don't even call it students teachers distribution. I always just call it a T distribution. And drop the student a bit, uh, but that's a that's a historical thing. So anyway, here's the idea. William Gossett figured out that if you want to replace sigma when you don't know it because you uh, you only have a sample, right? You don't have you don't actually know parameters when you are doing statistics and you what you want to replace sigma with is s what that does is it causes extra uncertainty since we don't know what the actual true population standard deviation is all we have is this other is s which is just an estimate of that and so what we're what we've got is we're trying to estimate mu and we're trying to estimate mu using two estimates Right when we had sigma, only one of them was an S. Only one of the two things uh, that you you gathered, x bar and sigma, were, were was an estimate. X bar was an estimate of mu. Sigma was not an estimate. It was apparently the, the true value. Well, in actual practical terms, you won't know that, and so you have to substitute S for sigma. So. When you do that, you're no longer using a normal distribution because the central limit theorem doesn't actually apply anymore. And what you've got is something called a T distribution. Now, a T distribution is very similar to a normal distribution. They're specifically designed to be close to a normal distribution. But the idea is that as your sample size gets bigger, your T distribution gets closer to an actual normal distribution because the S becomes a better estimate of sigma the more information you have. And so if your sample size is actually infinite, is, is the entire population, then S and sigma are the same thing. And so you get less uncertainty as you get more N basically. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip to the Wikipedia page real quick because I wanna show you a picture. Uh, is that? Where's my Wikipedia page? That one. So here is what the t distribution looks like. So um, the thing that you want to notice is uh, this this thing they're using for v is actually the um, degrees of freedom, which we will talk about in, in just a second. Just think of it as a proxy for sample size for right now. 
And notice that V equals one. I don't know if you can tell from the color here, but there's this, this yellow here is the smallest one. And then this purple, I think, is the next one up. So as the sample size goes up, right, one, two, five, the T distribution goes from shorter and fatter to taller and skinnier. This one up here, V equals infinity, this is the normal distribution. All right, this, this top one is, is actually N01. It's the, normal, it's the normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. And all of these other things are just an approximation of it. They're, they're the T distribution that is approximating that normal distribution. And by the way, T distributions always approximate that particular normal distribution, which means we're gonna have to do something, um, well, that'll come into play a little bit more in chapter nine. For right now, uh, we don't have to worry too much about that, but that, that is true. You don't get T distributions that are centered anywhere but zero and have a standard deviation. Well, we don't even know how to calculate the standard deviation. And if you wanna see the formula for them, by the way, which we will never use, it's, uh, it's, it's this. It's a, it's a big mess and it even uses a function that you've almost certainly never heard of called a gamma function. That's what this guy is right here. That's why we're not worrying about what the formula is. We're just having the calculator do all of it. But anyway, my point here is this. Uh, here, can I click on that? That doesn't really zoom in much. Ooh. Actually, that was that was fantastic. Why did it not z stop zooming in? Oh, shoot. What's it doing now? Sorry, I was hoping to get the zoomed in version. All right, well, I, I suppose we could just do this. There. All right, so the thing that you want to notice is that as n gets bigger, the thing they're calling v here, just think of it as n. As n gets bigger, we get closer to this distribution, to the, the normal distribution, because we have more complete information. That's the idea. So you might ask yourself, well, OK, how the heck are we going to use this if this is not a normal distribution? Also, that looks quite normal. It does. It's designed to look, uh, it, it's designed, it comes from basically the same idea as a normal distribution, um, but has extra uncertainty built in. Notice that for this black one, which is the normal distribution, it's, it's more clustered around the mean, whereas these T distributions are fatter and more spread out. So they have greater standard deviation, which is to say they have less certainty, right? Less, smaller standard deviation means more certainty or yeah, more certainty, more precision. Um, greater standard deviation means, means less certainty. So they, basically a T distribution is a normal distribution with some extra uncertainty built into it. That's really what it is. Okay, with that in mind, Let's go back to the notes and see what we're going to do. So the math behind these is significantly more difficult than it is even for normal distributions, and we care about none of that. From our perspective, it is almost exactly the same. Like we're going to, almost nothing we do is going to change. We're still doing this. That's ex still exactly what we're going to do. Standard error, instead of being sigma over root n, is going to be s over root n. And our, our critical value is going to have a different name. Instead of being called z alpha over 2, it will be t alpha over 2. And you might ask yourself, where the heck do I find t alpha over 2? Well, conveniently, that's what this rest, the rest of this table is. Right? Remember, we were only using the, the bottom number here for, for z alpha over 2. All these other things are t alpha over 2. Or everything else, uh, else in this table is a, is a t alpha over 2. df here stands for degrees of freedom. So what a degree of freedom is, is a little bit complicated to explain. Um, I'll, I'll give it my best shot. Basically, a degree of freedom is no, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not going to try to explain that. If you are interested in what a degree of freedom is, I will attempt to explain it to you um, sort of in person. Just, just ask me and I'll, I'll try to explain it to you, but it's probably too complicated to put into the video. It's basically one way in which your data can vary is, is essentially what a degree of freedom is. I'll elaborate on that if you ask me in person. It is not a thing you have to know for this class at all. 
The thing you do need to know is how to calculate degrees of freedom. And in this case, it's very simple. Degree of freedom is n minus one. It is one less than the sample size. That's it. Well, for this application, different applications will have different ways to calculate degrees of freedom in the future. Uh, but for this one and several of the ones that we'll use in the future, one less than the sample size is the degree of freedom. Notice that the left column here is the degrees is and says n minus one because that is the number of degrees of freedom that you've got. A thing I want to point out here is as the degrees of freedom goes up, which is go down the chart, the numbers in the column get closer to these numbers. And this number is actually quite close to that one. Up here, even to be 99% confident, those things are pretty similar to each other. Whereas the numbers are much larger, higher up the chart when we have less degrees of freedom. So we have to build in a lot of extra uncertainty up here. Once we get down here, we're not really like the uncertainty is is not that great, right? And then we're just using 2.756 instead of 2.576, right? Only 0.18 difference, something like that. 0 0.22, 0 0.18. No, I had it right the first time. Only 0.18 difference, right? So only 0.18 standard errors different between the t distribution and the normal distribution to capture this the same 99% of uh, of data. Okay, so from a practical standpoint, to make our confidence interval, very little changes. We're not actually gonna be using these numbers. We're instead going to be using the ones in the chart or in the, the main body of the chart. So we have to identify what our degrees of freedom are first, then look in the chart. That's it, that's how we're gonna find them. And that's basically the only thing that changes. Um, really from a practical standpoint, very little is different. So let's, uh, Let's do that. Let's uh, let's do this here. Okay, so the magic is gone. Simone no longer knows by magic what sigma is. She's trying to find the mean delivery time for yet another store, but this time she doesn't know anything about population delivery times, just like it will be in the real world. So she takes a sample of 27 delivery times and gets a mean of 32.4 minutes and a standard deviation of 4.5 minutes. Notice, I said, she doesn't know sigma, but here I am giving you a standard deviation. This is not sigma. This is the sample standard deviation because it is referring to the sample, right? So this is not sigma, this is S. So instead of uh, our standard error being sigma over root n, it will be S over root n. Our critical value will be T alpha over two rather than Z alpha over two. And our point estimate is still X bar. So we're still gonna do pretty much exactly the same thing we did before, right? But our formula is gonna look like uh, this. Let's, uh, let's go get this on a whiteboard. It's gonna look like this, X bar plus or minus T alpha over two times S over root N rather than Z alpha over two times Sigma over root N. Not much difference. So yeah, let's uh, let's make the confidence interval, and then we'll we'll do one by hand, and we'll show you how to do it on the calculator, and then I think that'll be the rest of the video. Let's see here. Uh, I forgot all the numbers. So if I come here, uh, yeah, then we'll do a couple on the calculator and be done. All right. So we've got uh, n is twenty seven, x bar thirty two point four, and s is four point five. So if n is 27, and by the way, it's okay that it's less than 30 now. Um, the, the t distribution is specifically designed for small sample sizes. So 27, totally fine. Nothing wrong with that. In fact, it could be much smaller. Uh, so if n is 27, that means the degrees of freedom is 26, it's n minus one. And so we want 95% confidence interval with 26 degrees of freedom. So we find that in the chart. 26 degrees of freedom, 95% is this one, this third to last one, 26 degrees of freedom. So I want to use this 2.056. That's my T alpha over two. So let's whiteboard this up. 
So that was, uh, I forgot the numbers, sorry. <laughs> I, I apologize, I, I think it was 33.6, is that what it was? 32.4, okay, 4.5, okay. So we have 32.4. Plus or minus 2.056 times 4.5 over the square root of 27. All right, that's what we're going to do. We'll just jam that into the calculator and see what we get. Uh, 32.4 minus 2.2.056 times 4.5 divided by the square root of oh, not that one. Oh, shoot. Calculator gets gets fussy here. Uh, seven. There we go. Same thing with plus. So there's my confidence interval, 30.62 up to 34.18 minutes. That's uh, that's confidence interval. So let's remember those numbers, 30.62, 34.18, and then we're gonna just jam that into the calculator because there's a T interval function in your calculator as well. So stat tests, T interval, oop, too far. T interval rather than Z interval. Um, this one, unlike Z interval, it, uses it, it goes in, in a sensible order of x bar s and n the other one i if you recall went sigma x bar and i don't know why they switched it seems very strange to me so we had uh, x bar was 32.4 s was 4.5 4.5 and n was 35 35 27 it's 27 and we wanted a 95% confidence interval 95 or 99? No, it's 95. Oh, hey, look at that. 30.62, 34.18. Exactly the same things we got the other way. So there you go. That's how you use your uh, use T interval. Um, from a practical standpoint, basically the same as a Z interval, like from the from the work that you have to do. Um, but it is usable in significantly more situations because there's no expectation that you know sigma, right? Which is a thing that you generally won't have if you're doing research and that's what you would make a conference interval. So in a practical sense, Z intervals don't actually come up very much because knowing sigma is actually fairly unlikely. Whereas T intervals come up all the time because you usually don't know sigma. So these are the ones you actually end up using most of the time when you're making an interval for means. Go back uh, to the Notes for just a second, see if I've missed anything. Nope, not really. Uh, we're gonna do these real quick. I'll just jam these into the calculator um, for some calculator practice and then that's it. I'm just gonna T interval both of them, right? Very convenient. Stat does T intervals number eight. Uh, stats, we've got X bar is 10, S is five, and is 45, confidence level 95%, go. Oop, I went too fast, I apologize. I, was, I forget if I don't, there's some things where you have to hit enter twice and I keep hitting it twice. Whereas this one, if I hit it twice, it erases this for some reason. Um, but yeah, there's my there's my interval, 8.49 up to 11.50. Uh, for part A, for part B, do the exact same thing. Stat, cow, or stat tests, number eight. Mean 1347, standard deviation 59.6, or I should say S rather than just standard deviation, and 19. The fact that it's less than 30 is not a problem. That's why we're using a T interval in the first place. Calculate. There we go. Not much to it. All right, that's all I wanted to say about uh, T intervals. Uh, we will re return to T intervals um, in chapter nine. We'll actually use them quite a bit there. Um, but for now, that's all I want to say about them and all I want to say about this particular part of confidence intervals. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video and then the next one will be on proportions, which turns out pretty, pretty similar actually. So 
um, for now, we're just going to go ahead and end the video and I will see you in the next one.